This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Joan and Janet are subtle energy empaths who navigate consciousness. Their passion is to support you in your evolution. As consciousness, we are all one. One mind, one heart, free of all limitations. Experience this reality with us and discover how it can make a difference in your daily living. Join us in a state of grace as we explore, with warmth and humor, this thing we call life. Now, here are Joan Newcomb and Janet Barrett. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We're your co-hosts, Joan Newcomb, coming to you from Tacoma, Washington. And Janet Barrett, my partner, is coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone. How nice to be with you again. We have a very interesting show today. We are talking about (laughs) consciousness and feeling bad. There is a collective uproar of what's below the surface in each of us guilt, shame, and more. So stay tuned because we're going to talk about responding as consciousness with all of these feelings. Yeah, and here's an invitation to go with us deeper, to connect with us beyond the show. You can check out our website, www.consciousconversationswithjoanandjanet.com. And there you're going to find, see all these podcasts, all these great shows that become podcasts. You'll find out about both our blogs. I write on Monday and Joan writes on Friday. We write about what we notice about life and in our groups. And then we also have all our meetups information is there. And I do mine here in Portland, Oregon a couple days a week and Joan is all over the, the Puget Sound area. So, uh, and about personal sessions that we do. So, and all the Facebook stuff. What's, what's all that details for them, Joan? <laughs> sure. So So most of the stuff you can access on our website, and there are links to Facebook and Twitter on the website and YouTube, I hope. You Mm -hmm. can uh, you can find us on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, look for Janet Barrett or Joan Newcomb or the show Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And just join the group and join the fun. You can follow us on Twitter, which is at Joan and Janet. Janet's on Twitter at Janet Beyond. And I'm on Twitter, at Joan Newcomb. I don't make you think really hard. So uh, the show is on YouTube. Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet is on YouTube. So if you enjoy YouTube, you can binge listen to us there. I have my podcast, actually my videos, my weekly videos are on YouTube as well. But you can see them on our website, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I want to give you a real quick heads up about my uh, my meetups that are coming around the Puget Sound. I have one this Sunday on October 22nd. I'm going to be down in University Place, which is not Seattle, but it's uh, south of Tacoma, just a little bit. It's where the Whole Foods is, next to Whole Foods at the University Place Library in the Seattle, excuse me, in the Tacoma area. Don't confuse you. Uh, so that is October 22nd from 3 to 5, and that's a Conscious Conversations. Those are free. When I'm at the library, it's free. And we have a conversation similar to our radio shows. We talk about what's going on in our lives and the experiences and shifts that we're going through. And people really find it very helpful to have a bigger viewpoint of what's going on and what's transforming in their lives. We talk about things just like on this show where you won't find most people having this kind of in-depth conversation. On Saturday, the excuse me, Sunday the 29th, I'm up in Redmond, and I'm doing something uh, different uh, for the Redmond area. I am doing a consciousness master class. I am holding it in a conference room that happens to be in the back of the family pancake house there. So grab a stack of pancakes and learn some consciousness techniques in between munching on all that nice maple syrup. And that's going to be $10 there. That's Sunday, October 29th from 2 to 4 p.m. in Redmond. And then on Sunday, November 5th, I am in Seattle doing a conscious coffee. And those are brand new that I'm going to be uh, 
going around the Puget Sound doing, I find meeting rooms in coffee shops and cause, cause coffee and conversation goes really well. And that's another opportunity to go deeper than our library meetups. Our library meetups kind of stay, uh, you know, on some, you know, not superficial, but on topics that because we always have new people coming, we only learn about parallel universes. So if you come to the coffee shop ones, you can get deeper into conversation with me about some other ways to navigate life as consciousness. And if you're really excited and you can't come to any of those things, I do monthly webinars and I have coaching programs that I can, I have coached people around the world, different countries, different time zones through Zoom and through Skype and by phone. And I can tutor you directly on how to do these things. Well, and if you're in the Portland area, I'll just mention that we do conscious conversations with Janet and Consciousness Playground here at my home. Uh, you can find that through the website or my email, my web site or meetup.com and we have wonderful times we do those tuesday evenings and thursday afternoons and like joan does up there in the seattle area it's all about taking what we do and making it real for you for ourselves right because sometimes there's just a lot of Okay, that's the problem, and there's no solutions. And we're always looking to see how that is real for each of us and where that shift as ourselves as consciousness takes place. So join her up there, join me here, and you'll be better for it. We have some most marvelous things that happen when we get in group. And uh, uh, for those that come, it's life-changing, and that's what we want to be able to offer you. So in one way or another, right, Joan? Right. That's that's what you and I are all about, that we do it totally differently, as you can tell if you listen to this show long enough. We are very, very different, but we are united in consciousness and encouraging other people to expand in this awareness of consciousness. And your lovely home in Portland, there's more information actually on our website, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. There's a page on Meetup that shows uh, where Janet's, a link actually to go to meetup.com and join Janet's group down there and uh, and one to join mine up here. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a lovely home in Portland. And I, I guarantee I've been to her meetups and that will knock you on your ass, but in a very pleasant way. Yeah, really. Maybe I'll include a picture of my living room on the on the website. You yeah. should. You should. I should. It's so well decorated. It's really lovely. A picture of our Oriental rug, that Stargate that's in there that everybody sends their all the crap to. It just really is very effective, that's for sure. You'll feel it when you be here. So today we're going to talk about how... All kinds of stuff has been showing up in our worlds, right? And what do we want to do about that? Some of it doesn't really feel very good. And how do we deal with that? Because that is within each of us in some way or another. And it's kind of been stuck in keeping us from being as, I don't know, fulfilled, happy. What are those words that come to mind about feeling good? Yes. About being life, right? Yeah. Yes, and it was interesting because when we talked, we always talk on Monday or Tuesdays to plan the show, and you were picking up on sort of a collective shame in the world. Yeah. And yeah. You're not in social media as much as I am, and there is this whole Me Too movement, which is actually 10 years old, I discovered. It's actually been around for 10 years, but it, it got a hashtag attached to it, and so it's now mm-hmm. worldwide, where people who are survivors of sexual assault or harassment and actually harassment is a form of assault uh they say me too and people are dumbfounded by how many people have chimed up which and you think about the people who are choosing not to chime in about that as well so there's a morphic field there's a collective energy that is coming up in the world and and you think about how Shame has been used to keep people quiet, keep people not speaking up. So this is all about us coming in into the light, becoming more light ourselves. And anything that is dark, dense or discordant 
is in the process of disintegrating. So, of course, the ucky stuff is coming to the surface. We're getting triggered, but really it's an opportunity to heal. Well, I think what's showing up in in social media and political and, and all around us is we are feeling assaulted in a number of different ways. And that's what I think we're really paying attention to is how all the un spoken hurts that each of us encompass and uh, are in our genetic lineages and it's all coming to fruition and coming out which has got to be good and it's just how we deal with it so when we come back from commercial i bet we can really get into that huh? that's right that's right you must be telepathic yes we need to <laughs> stop for a commercial break but stay tuned because we're talking about consciousness and feeling bad Uh, from a state of grace when we get back. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And thanks so much for helping to co-create the show, no matter if you're listening live or on demand. You energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Tune in next week for another great show, and until then, keep enjoying this wonderful adventure we call life. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan. I'm along here with Janet, and we are talking about consciousness and feeling bad. Well, I loved how you put how you feel bad in a state of grace. <laughs> I, I looked at that. I'm like, I want to say feeling good. So maybe by the end of this, we'll say uh, and feeling good. I think that's what happens when you look at it life that way is that we do feel bad and that's normal. And then we do feel good and that is normal. And how do we make the shift? How do we transform to, into feeling good is through grace, right? Warm support, non-judgment. And in using those, those as your mechanism and being present in a way that invites potential, that infinite sea of uh, potential that consciousness is, is how you take these shitty things and the world. Can we say that on the air? <laughs> Well, you know, it's, it, it's the truth of it, right? That's the way we recognize it. But most of us, we don't know what to do with that information, so we're going to put it down. We're going to we're going to put it someplace, compartmentalize it, and we never really get out of it. And what we're saying is, as this comes up, and as it comes at us, that holding a state of grace is is key. And we and and that's what we want to share with people. I was thinking about how I'm a facilitator of the transformation game, and it's a it's a game that originated at Findhorn. And there is a miracle square that you can land on in this transformation game, and you get all your pain released mm. gracefully. And there's a there's a card you can draw also that that gracefully releases your your pain or anything that's holding you back. So you think about the energy of grace can can release the things that seem the most stuck. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that's an opportunity now because what is coming to the surface is feels so deep rooted, feels so locked in the closet Mm -hmm. and. A lot of it may not even be your own life experience, but generational, like you said. So we're yeah. going back in the miasms of, of patterns of experience. And to be able to be expansive enough to release it, not resist it, but to release it and let it just flow away from you. You were talking about something uh, just before we went on. You were you were talking about something you guys did in group, which was pretty awesome. About not necessarily aligning to absorb those things, but aligning to release those things. Yeah, last night in group, and, you know, you got to join us because that's where it happened. Is um, our awareness that 
we're we're full of all kinds of stuff. And so often we're looking, how, how do we take ir- irreconcilable things and put them in a context where we're not fighting ourselves all the time? And one way you do that is by acknowledging that they both have place and that they both can be in the same place. And so, okay, you're present and you're with that stuff. And then there's a sense of where you're... We sometimes what we notice that seems appropriate is to look for the alignment in things. Then there's also what became very aware last night was move it out of alignment, move it so far out of alignment. And in that means releasing your your need to make sense of something It's just releasing that and that that moves it out and that's what it did it moved out so much because we weren't having to reconcile it we weren't having to keep track we weren't having to do anything it just became something that was oh yeah in the field and it's over there and it really had no power anymore where it wasn't held in the same context. And it was huge for the group. It was huge. And and that was a different approach. It reminds me of a similar but different technique that, that I have used with my clients and students. And it is about not matching energy. Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, when you have something in alignment with you or if you're in alignment with it, you're matching that vibration. So there is, in a way, you can see this in groups where people are all in agreement about not talking about something. It's like the family yeah. no-talk rule. Yeah, you know, There's abuse going on in a family and you don't talk about it. And as a child, you you buy into that and you think that people are going to blame you. It's your fault that this is happening. And when you wake up as an adult, you suddenly go, oh, that's, you, you come, that's not okay. You, you become out of alignment with that. And, and it's the process of that can be really uncomfortable, but it's ultimately to free yourself. So the, the, a simple technique to sort of bypass all the psychology of it or, you know, looking deep within and, and removing it piece by piece is to simply be aware of the energy level that you're no longer in agreement with that you can assign it. Okay. What is a good color for, for, for shame? You know, for me, it feels icky. It feels slimy. Maybe it's kind of a mucusy yellow green. So that's the energy of shame and you can be a completely different vibration to that. You know, maybe you are, a, you can be a completely beautiful clear blue. You can be a light lavender. You can be a sunlight gold. And when you shift your vibration to being a different frequency, a different color, it can disintegrate from your, your space. And the interesting thing when you do that, or, and I would, You know, I would also say that if you you did what Janet suggested, it's interesting to see who disappears from your life, who doesn't show up or who transforms, who becomes a different person because you're no longer holding that energy within you. So then people who are at that energy no longer are around you. Yeah, alignment's an interesting word, you know, and I don't know why or where that comes from within me that I would use that word because I do use that word a lot. And in realizing, okay, so it's alignment, no alignment, I think is really this or that. It's another way to utilize the scalar power that that is present and scalar being where something is and where something isn't the exact opposite and, and how what happens when you collapse those places. Uh, in, in physics, I guess. And so the idea is that we're not, I'm not in alignment because there is no alignment. That's the key. That there is no alignment because there's no alignment. There's nothing to match up to. Well, there's so when nothing. you're in consciousness, there's yeah. no alignment because when you're actually at that very high right. 
energy of a line of, of excuse me of consciousness for me i've described it as the 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 ultimate in non-resistance mm-hmm. at such high frequency that anything else just passes through and you don't even feel it it's like flying at uh, above the clouds you have no resistance mm-hmm yeah, you just have observance powers. Well, and in another way, one thing that's been showing up in the last month or so is about more about vibrational and resonances for me, certainly in observing things and really connecting with that in a different way than I had in the past. And one thing we did last week when Tom and I were on vacation was take these beautiful drives down the gorge and the gorge here uh, had had a lot of fire this last month so we were concerned about what that looked like and stuff so buyers are pretty much out so we we did our track what was really interesting was the clouds and um it's a beautiful drive to begin with but there was and there was this all this cloud action going on and as i was observing the clouds and what causes a cloud and what what defines what it is and what it isn't and where it is and where it isn't and when it's rain and when it's not and when it's fog and all this. And we were looking at that and I just became aware that, you know, when you watch a cloud for me, it changes the next moment I look at it again, right? It has this wonderful ability to just be different all the time. And whatever I notice it as can be, is just that momentary noticing. And that, In a vibrational tone, a cloud forms when a bunch of density happens, when stuff matches up, and then it just comes apart. And so I was seeing that as tone, seeing that as vibrations and resonances, which are really popping up through the culture here, and that, oh, just take it back to particles. They don't have to be collective. And in allowing myself to view it that way, things were just changing and and we could feel it pretty quickly and it was just very powerful way to take something that seems so solid our grief our shame um whatever the name and you know it's that feeling bad stuff um and it was different and it, it was just so, so wonderful. Take, so slow slow down here because you, you know it's like so for some people like what they're still at what scale are so um <laughs> So, but I, I love that. So it is, it, you just casually said, you know, take it back to particles. Yeah. Take it back to well, particles. It's just water particles, right? That's what clouds are. Yes. And, and, and it's there and it's around us all the time and it just changes form all the right. time. And so there's dynamics at play there and you and I sitting here are, you know, oh, well, there's the Gulf Stream. Well, Everything is unique in that. So yes. something was there and something's not there. And if it's that simple, because all energy just keeps replicating itself, right? And nature so reflects and mirrors what where we are because we're all in uh, resonance with one another. Um, just invite that. And, you know, we've had, we have people group who have family and friends in Santa Rosa where it's been burning and how to be helpful. And this is all coming from that place. How in being who we are is helpful. And remembering that we each have the power to make a difference. And I don't need to have a gun in order to affect you. So I'm going to jump in on that because you've now covered like three different very big heavy-duty topics. But I want to go back to the clouds because there's a a very simple way of just all you have to do is, you know, look at a cloud. And if you if you focus your intent on it enough, you can make it break up and move away. And I I know I know a couple who's actually and she they did this with us at a a meetup uh, down in University Place. We all trooped outside because it was in the evening. And we looked up and we made collectively made a star move. It, it jumped. It jumped <laughs> over. So I am aware that this reality is a holographic creation of consciousness. And that doesn't mean that it's not real because when you go all Buddhist and say it's an illusion, that there's there's a lot of mistranslations or misinterpretations of what that means. 
But I think of it as a very marvelous, very complex, infinitely unfolding and recreating holographic uh, full immersion. Yeah, it's like a full immersion video game is another way I've described it. So when I and the thing is, is as we are becoming more conscious, then more more changes are happening and they're showing up in the different aspects of the programming. So, for instance, you know, weather is a core programming of this full immersion. You know, if this were Disneyland, they would have areas that were climate controlled or they'd have, you know, the, the water is flowing at this temperature for the alligators in Adventure Park or whatever. I haven't been to Disneyland in a long time. So, um, but uh, the, so just think about, we just had a Hurricane Ophelia formed in a part of the, the Atlantic where hurricanes don't form and instead <laughs> of great. going towards you know instead of going towards the 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 Americas it went up towards Ireland and all the thing i could think of is the amount of collective focus and energy and prayer that had gone to divert the other hurricanes during the emerge you know and people were coming collectively together and it it sometimes there's a bit of lag time in reality <laughs> and so oops Oops, it showed up and, and the collective force made it go to Ireland. You know, we should have, you know, anyhow, there's no should about it, but it was kind of an amusing thing to show that, uh, the opposite can happen or things that are outside the box. So it, there's possibilities for transformation and change. You know, it's like climate change is a very real aspect of what's going on in the hologram. And to me, I realize is that but this awareness is that, you know, something can get invented. Something can come up to reverse it, change it, fix it, or heal it in a way that we don't have a scientific answer for it right now, but we can, we can make one up later, you know, so you know, that's what, what comes to, the couple things come to mind. And one is, I, when you said climate change, I heard climate reflection and I thought, oh, yeah, I kind of like that that way to look at it a little bit it makes more sense to me um but but there was i will just offer you know a lot of us do a lot of climate work right uh and i last week we were on vacation at home and the weather i looked at the forecast for seven days and it was rain 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 and i went i don't want to spend my vacation outside and hey well, it would be nice if it didn't have to be that. That's all I said. And we had four or five of those seven days, stunning, beautiful weather here. And then my husband and I are sitting out at night, made around our fire pit, and we're just watching, watching the stars. And I went, hmm, gee, this stuff does work, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it was just so delightful that um, it didn't not rain. But it just showed up. It was more predisposition to uh, to what I wanted, and so that's got to be good, right? So we had a good time. So, <sighs> right. So that gives you a way to feel good. Yeah, it's important. You know, appreciation is important. Those those are ways that yeah. There's a, there. You raise a good point here about changing the weather. And focusing and, you know, I, I don't know if you and I were in the same seminar where the collective group, you know, lessened something that was going to slam into Galveston and Houston. There's, it's a totally different experience when you are focusing on changing the weather from the perspective of consciousness which is done from a, a, a perspective of curiosity. And I hear typing and, uh, curiosity and playfulness. And that is doing it from this perspective of consciousness. But if you do it as ego, that's you trying to, or per body personality is how I describe it, that's you trying to change, fix, and manipulate your hologram, that actually just tends to mire you in more deeply. And I will, I would hazard that, you know, to, here's how to define the difference. You can tell the difference between, um, put yourself on mute. 
Somebody put her on mute. Okay. So, uh, that's so interesting. I'll just, I will let you know that just what happened in the hologram for Janet is the power company came to her door right as we were talking about this. So that is hilarious, but that's fine because I love to talk and I have a lot more that I can say about this. So he, I want to tell people the difference. You know, we, we hear things through our filters and if you have uh, like a st- strong negative reaction to something, you're hearing it through your body personality future filter. If you have an expansive, lighthearted experience to something, that's you hearing it from your greater expanded self. So your greater expanded self has uh, a bigger perspective. It is beyond time and space. It's also beyond lifetimes. That's the part of you that's immortal. So it can look at things going on in the world today. It can look at this collective issue of me too and shame and guilt or people's grief and loss and which just feels just like oh my gosh it's gut-wrenching from our body personality perspective but as consciousness you can see it as part of the evolutionary shift part of the expansion these are things that are coming to the surface to release to let go of and from the perspective of consciousness, there's also there's no loss because there we we still exist whether our bodies exist or not. Our bodies don't like to hear that; it really freaks them out. You know, everything from the body personality spec, uh, perspective is is uh, you know life or death, black or white. So we're 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 not one or the other, but we're on a spectrum. And as consciousness, you have created your physical form. It's part of the spectrum, but you've created the physical form, the denser aspect as a vehicle, your full immersion vehicle to experience this physical reality. And it's about learning how to navigate within it into a fully embody it and be responsive to it. So there you think about um, these really rigid religious practices that you know require you to fast or require you to abstain and uh, the the intention of those things are to help you be more spiritual but what often happens is that your body goes into resistance and it's like riding a horse that you've refused to feed you know or riding riding a horse down a, a pathway without letting it know where it's going so we as consciousness can navigate through this world in our physical bodies, in a caring and loving way, and it helps us have a better experience in the world. Um, so there's a lot of really challenging things going on right now. You know, there's there's uh, things that are triggering. There are things that are painful. I was listening to a news report yesterday, and I found myself getting totally bummed out about something to do with military families. And... Um, yeah, I've got military in my background. Yeah, I grew up overseas moving places. Maybe I've got some resonances with that, but it really hit me deep. And I thought, this is so interesting. I am completely in sympathy, empathy with their plight. And this is happening to us on, on, on such a um, moment to moment level. We're also, universally connected now that we can hear these tragic stories of things happening to people in other countries you know in the old days it would have taken you months to have getting got a letter from you know your relatives on the east or west coast so now we're collectively connected and we're also collectively resonating with these bad feelings that are coming up and i'll put bad in air quotes because there it's not there, there, there is no bad. And our bodies are resonating to them. Our bodies communicate to us with emotions. If you think about a little baby, it cries when it's hungry. It cries when it's sad. It cries when it's wet. It cries when it's tired. And at our essence, our physical body is still doing that. It's crying because it wants lunch. It's crying because it wants to take a nap. And this consciousness, rather than ignoring it or disciplining it or like you have to meditate for three hours kind of thing, you can work in loving harmony with your body. Maybe, okay, so your body is triggered. We've used a lot of very triggering keywords during this broadcast. 
You know, maybe you do need to take a nap. Maybe you need some comfort food. There are healthy versions of comfort food. You can have mac and cheese made with cauliflower. You know, (laughs) you can take care of yourself and care for yourself. And it's amazing because it helps you release it. It helps you let it go. So it reminds me of what we were talking about earlier about being in alignment or being out of alignment. So if you think that a lot of us were raised in ways to be out of alignment, you know, shame, no talking about it, you know, keeping things hidden. It's all a way of being out of alignment and how you can come into alignment with releasing these painful things or bringing these painful things to the surface is that you can lovingly care for yourself. It be easy with yourself. You can be the adult now letting it go and paying attention to your body does not affect your spiritual growth it doesn't make you less uh conscious it actually makes you more conscious because you're you're in agreement with the the vehicle that you're experiencing reality with i am thinking about another aspect of this which is the the people who are triggering us or the people who are in our hologram that are the icky people. <laughs> and uh, somebody, somebody I know got in trouble on Facebook for trying to give a balanced perspective. And uh, another person I know uh, who, when she was going through getting her uh, degree in psychology, she worked with abusers at a prison. And I was like, I don't know how I could do that. You know, I that, that just feels so like my skin crawling. And you realize that we're all consciousness embodying different forms. Now, when I'm not resistant to it, when I'm not in alignment with that mucusy kind of energy, those people don't come into my hologram anymore. They, they, they disappear out of my storyline, so to speak. And a way that I can be not in resistance with them is to think of this reality as kind of a movie. And if you are watching a movie with somebody playing a really creepy role, you have to realize that when filming is done or when the movie is over, you know, you take your makeup off, you take your costume off, and everybody, you know, goes to the cafeteria for lunch or goes out to a bar for a drink. That's after after the life is over, so to speak. It helped me put this into perspective when I was dealing with my, with issues to do with my father. So I've shared on this show before that my father, we found out when I was a teenager, did not work for the State Department, but he worked uh, as an agent for the CIA and his job in Germany was to talk people into defecting. So it was a pretty uh, intense experience and he suffered from depression so he would get verbally abusive and physically violent at times I never framed it until I was an adult that we grew up in an experience of domestic violence and that was a very challenging thing to to transform now he's passed and the the energy of the being is completely different and I realize his essence was that of a light bringer and light bringers go into dark places to bring things to light. So it's a completely different way to reframe something that you would really struggle with. And welcome back, Janet. Do you have anything to contribute? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You know? And it's our century link line. So you know, our internet go. service and our service and being with, with our audience. And I'm like, and he just showed up. You know, so you kind of, I guess you just have to go where they are. So we'll see if we can get some things taken care of. So you've been telling them all kinds of wonderful information about. Oh, I went all over the map. I I reached back to talking about being in alignment, being out of alignment. I talked about the weather and, and perspectives of changing energy from consciousness versus our body personalities. Then I went into a long explanation about body personalities. And then I went into some of the icky stuff and how to um, how reframe. to have a different perspective. Reframe it, exactly. So what you can go anywhere, Janet, and we'll still be on topic. <laughs> you get to talk for the next five minutes before we go to break. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I think I just want to offer people that... Uh, Whatever you're noticing and however you're noticing, clarity is there. 
we we start out as consciousness. So, and what consciousness is is grace, and we may call it love, and we may give it a lot of different things. But I always like to start from a state of grace, and that's what it is. And then we have human that forms, and we have experiences, and that kind of gets gets on us, right? But throughout it all, in all of that, underneath it, foundation is that you are grace that each of us are. And so you're just, you're just making that a very, um, focused intent to connect with what you know your truth is. And that whatever's showing up on the surface or bubbling out or coming at us or whatever is just a way we can always we are that light that you were talking about. It is present in each of us. And in consciousness, there is no judgment. That's what we do. So we're going to meet things, meet people, uh, have events happen that we don't like, that, that bring us different kinds of emotional terrains and put us there. And that's as it's supposed to be. It's how we deal with it, which is what is our power. And in offering ourselves to these situations that we come up against, it's not about trying to change anybody or anything. It's about how in being in our truth of ourselves as grace makes a difference. How we align our, and this is an alignment I think that you, re, I really support in how offering ourselves as the quality that we are and allowing it to interact with that. And it transforms itself. It it changes things. And it's not through my intention to make something happen or dictate it or push it or force it, which is that human quality at times. It's just about in being and letting that radiate out And what happens within me when I do that, where my own clarity comes through. And that's what we share with one another. That's my two cents, I guess. That's that's great. And what I caught in there was about, it's not about changing others. It's not about, you know, changing the scenery, so to speak. But it's a very subtle thing. When you shift as consciousness, reality reorganizes. Mm-hmm. Reality changes. And the thing I find delightful in, in playing on this level is when you shift as consciousness, then, uh, it, things unfold bigger than you can possibly imagine. And we're going to continue with this really fascinating conversation, but we need to break for another commercial break. So you're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet. And stay tuned because after we come back, we'll continue talking about consciousness and feeling good. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And thanks so much for helping to co-create the show, no matter if you're listening live or on demand. You energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at ConsciousWithJoanAndJanet at gmail.com. Tune in next week for another great show. And until then, keep enjoying this wonderful adventure we call life. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan Long, here with Janet, and we are talking about consciousness and feeling. Good. That's something we've been doing in group, Joan. You know, these last couple of weeks had had so much trauma and drama going on that it was, how, how do we be helpful, right? How, because we're not personally there and we didn't know anyone personally injured. Um, and so, so how do the rest of us be helpful and that's what we did is we just allowed us ourselves to notice how we noticed uh what we held that situation to be as and what it felt like and then we just sat with it and allowed and it had a certain resonance to it and it felt very dirgy 
<laughs> and it was after Las Vegas for sure. Yeah. And that had a very different energy from the other, from the hurricanes in Puerto Rico and that. Um, and we, I just allowed my tone to be present. And you know, that wonder you get with drumming circles and musicians warming up and singers starting to warm up and all of a sudden this sound becomes something else. It becomes just part of the whole. And that's what happened. And it, and it wasn't intentional to do anything specific. It was just offering a tone, our tone, and how that all of a sudden shifted the dynamics of what and the awareness that we were holding about the emotions that were in place and stuff. And I want to offer that to people. You know, how do you not try and change people or something, but you find yourself in a situation and just go inward and find your tone. Yes. Find where you are and allow it to emanate. Because most of us, you know, we tend to be very quiet about that inner place within ourselves or we save it for certain times of the month or something uh, once a week on Sunday and it's really always present and so sometimes we forget our own tone yeah. that's wonderful I, I, I actually got an an audio image not a visual image but a, a, like a <laughs> hearing image of when orchestras are warming up or people doing vocal warm-ups and how they start discordant and then they can come into harmony. So just like how I had offered a technique that was primarily visual because you were thinking of colors, Mm -hmm. you're talking about tuning within and thinking of a note or a tone, which can, can totally not only shift your energy, but as you resonate that tone, it can help others come into harmony as well well and it brings back the spectrum right where before the dirge was what you heard all of a sudden that that is no longer a dirge it's just part of a deep resonance and a tonal quality that adds to the whole and now you have this wonderful orchestration and i'll use that word of all these different instruments and all these different sounds playing together and it has this most incredible state to it. And um, let, let's see about trying that more often, you know. So you can use your senses, visually, uh, auditory, uh, what you just think you know. <laughs> use any of them and, and change can happen. There, you can feel good and uh, in times when you think you might not uh, and it helps sort sort out that stuff inside, right? Yes. Mm, yeah. Oh, this has been a fascinating conversation. I would I would offer people that you may want to listen to this show more than once to get all the juicy <laughs> aspects of it. And how you can do that is you can go to our website, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet dot com, to access the podcast and all the other podcasts that we have done are on that show, uh, on that website. You can also read the blogs that Janet and I put out. We, we write about these things more in depth. You also can find out about our meetups, so you can come meet us in person if you are in Portland. Janet does hers on Tuesday evenings and on Thursday afternoons in her lovely home near Reed College. And I do mine around the Puget Sound. I'm coming up right now. I'm in a university place on Sunday, October 22nd from 3 to 5 p.m. at the library, which is right next to Whole Foods. I'm going to be up in Redmond uh, doing a consciousness master class at the family pancake house in the meeting room in the back. And that's going to be $10. And then on Sunday, November 5th in Seattle, I'm going to be at Cafe Appassionato in Magnolia doing a conscious coffee. And that's also going to be $10. And that's a way to go deeper and learn some techniques for navigating. I uh, think- we- uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, in three minutes, do you want to tell them about the Facebook groups and everything? Oh, no, I don't want to tell them any of that. I just want to share with people that the, that what happens with our groups, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen with other groups, is that it's not about complaining. And then, okay, that what that is. It's about bringing what's important and how you're noticing yourself in your world to a bigger 
uh, sharing and how in doing that, in that space that it's about potential and heart-centered awareness, that it will be different, that change will happen. And it happens every time. I know it happens every time with your group. It happens with my groups is that it's, we're a little different and we, we own that very much so. So I, I just want to throw that in. And if you want to create some specific changes in your life, if you would like some assistance with navigating your life as consciousness and completely transforming your life, I have coaching programs where I can guide you individually or as part of a group to completely transform your life in six, eight, or 12 weeks. So go to my website, joan-nukem.com, to look at my coaching programs. Oh, and I have my consciousness cookies every day that go out on Twitter, right. LinkedIn, and Facebook. Something to give you, something to think about every day. So, right. So, so, so if, you go, <laughs> if you go to our website, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, or if you're on the Contact Talk Radio, ctrnetwork.com, there are links to our websites and to our individual pages as well. And you can find Janet's consciousness cookies there and all the other groovy things that we put out. Yeah. Oh, it feels better. It feels does better. feel better. I don't want to say it feels better, but it does feel better, right? Yes. You know, I mean, it's not about feeling good or bad or anything. It's just about feeling different and going, oh, I like how this feels. And and, uh, and we've been all those places. So. Yes, we've been lots of places today. <laughs> and um, when we when we create it as a judgment to feel better, then we solidify it into... Uh, some aspect of perfection and it yeah. actually propels, it propels us away from what, how we actually want to feel. Right. We want to feel expansive. We want to feel free. We want to feel lighthearted. We want to feel joyous and it's a lot more effortless than you can imagine. So stay tuned to our shows and come to our meetups and look at our website and listen to our podcasts uh, because you'll be able to maintain this feeling uh, throughout your daily life. You have been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet. It's been lovely, everyone. Sorry I got disrupted there a bit, but it's it, a- right. Well, hey, it's all part of growth and change. So stay <laughs> tuned next week, same time, same same channels. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And thanks so much for helping to co-create the show, no matter if you're listening live or on demand. You energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at ConsciousWithJoanAndJanet at gmail.com. Tune in next week for another great show. And until then, keep enjoying this wonderful adventure we call life. Life.